at least all the families are now come out. They were targeted because they were Christians and conservatives and said, please don't use our dead family uh, for your move to disarm us. Please don't do it. But the vampire in chief uh, is going to be arriving and squatting on them and uh, doing that, uh, flying in on his carry his carrion uh, helicopter. The new American.com is the new site. It's excellent. You can also subscribe, get the magazines, get them in bulk to wake up friends and family. One of the most effective ways to wake people up is doing that. You can also sign up to get the daily headlines emailed to you there at the top of the new American.com. Now, shifting gears before I go back to our guest, um, we are offering some of the biggest specials ever. We always have specials of the week, but usually just one special. We have free shipping and 10% off on the water filtration systems at InfoWarsStore.com. One of the biggest things you can do for your health is cut out the glyphosates, the fluoride, and hundreds of other chemicals. You can see the informational videos, see side-by-side -side lab results with leading competitors, and more. So InfoWarsStore.com, 10% off and free shipping right now uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. We have 20% uh, off until next Wednesday on Prostagard. That's only fifteen ninety six. Leading competitors with just this dose, you can look it up yourself, of saw palmetto are $25, $30, This is the standard recommended dose of saw palmetto, organic. And then we've got a bunch of other things known to be good for the old prostate. So this is the formula. I just set out to promote and push and, and, and build and produce what is the very best for the lowest possible price. So Prostagard, check it out, InfoWarsLife.com. We are selling out of Survival Shield Nation on X2, but it should only be a few weeks till that comes back in. Um, we've been sold out of Super Male for about three weeks. Uh, Super Female, a very small amount came in that they were had done an overrun of about 500 bottles and then had the label. So we have that. It works just as well as Super Male. It's basically the same formula, just has one other thing in it. Uh, There's more libido. I personally like it myself. So super female is in if you're craving super male. Uh, and then we've also uh, got a lot of other really high quality products like the liver shield, liver cleanse, and that whole breakdown. That's back in stock at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. You can buy the liver shield itself by itself uh, or you can get it with the oxy powder. And you can read the five star, the 4.8 star reviews on average. Uh, they're truly a game changer. Uh, Liver Shield has a 4.7 overall of 400 plus reviews. Uh, some have a 4.9, but we use third party reviews uh, system uh, that is power reviews, one of the most highly respected. And it's unheard of to have a 4.5 or over that when you have thousands of reviews total. Some of the products have thousands of reviews themselves total. So uh, check it out for yourself. But also know you're funding the very tip of the spear of aggressive libertarian, patriot-based Americana, no apologies. We wear our bias to promote freedom and to tell the truth openly. We fly our flags of no surrender openly. And it takes that to shake people out of the tyranny. Now, William F. Jasper of the New American Magazine, their editor, joins us. I've been interviewing this fellow for, oh, I don't know, probably 17 years. Uh, he's been fighting him, I know, for over 30 years. His parents for 50-plus years. But is it not surreal? I want to go back to the big picture here and then get back into the minutia and where this is all going. To get the Clinton Library documents, as Joseph Farah at the Western Journalism Center did last year, and it's them in the early 90s, mentioning the John Birch Society, mentioning Western Journalism Center, mentioning what if there becomes a new media to challenge us, We've got to instruct all the controlled media to call them conspiracy theorists and kooks and, and just deny everything exists, deny, deny, deny. We have their own battle plan, and now they still just bleed it out and say, there's no secret treaties, there's no world government. Raising the debt limit doesn't raise the, the debt limit. Uh, gun crime's up, even though it's not. And th their poll numbers go down and down. People, I think, more and more who are thinking really get what's happening. I mean, the success of this show, uh, Drudge showing up Tuesday, you know, and endorsing us publicly. Uh, that was a private uh, relationship before that. Uh, so many others in law enforcement, uh, federal and state and local, want me to know that they're aware of what's happening and are totally freaked out. The military is incredibly awake right now. I mean, I really think 
starting with the John Birch Society, uh, starting with uh, people like Barry Goldwater, uh, Mr. Welsh. We're not giving credit here. They wouldn't want credit. They, they'd want to defeat the tyranny. But if you read the quotes by Barry Goldwater in the 60s about global government and the Trilateral Commission and CFR you know, later in the 70s, it's 100% it's on. We need to let folks understand because what I found really wakes them up. You guys should put a whole issue out. See, we told you so. Uh, and, you know, John Birch Society predicts basically everything and just show the thousands of quotes by you, by patriots, by you 30 years ago and everybody else accurately charting the future of what we faced so people will now listen to the next chapter. And that's what I want to get to next. What are they going to do next? What's their end game if we don't stop them? Well, <clears throat> you put your finger on some very important points. And here's what's important for people to understand. And the, the key principle on here is power and concentrating power uh, is it a, always a threat to liberty. When you concentrate power at greater and greater levels and you get out to the global level, uh, then you're talking about a, a huge threat to a human liberty. Uh, centralizing power, concentrating power, internationalizing power on a global scale is a, is a very bad idea if you believe in liberty. And the folks that are promoting this, that have been for over uh, the last 50 years especially, uh, even longer, going back nearly a century to the founding of the globalist movements in the Council on Foreign Relations and the, uh, the other international circles like that, uh, they know what they're doing. They believe in concentrating power and concentrating it more, the more they can concentrate it, the more they can empower their little oligopoly. And that oligarchy then will ha have political, economic, social, media control throughout the whole planet. And that's where we are uh, rapidly approaching right now. We had a special issue of The New American uh, just a little over a year ago. Uh, called the United Nations on the brink of becoming a world government. And in that, we survey, we have a map of the world, show all of the different adjuncts of the United Nations, the whole United Nations bureaucracy all over the world, economic, political, social. And most Americans are unaware that the United Nations has grown to such huge dimensions and that it has offices and regional and national and global buildings and headquarters all over the world with all of its multitude of agencies. And we show on the map, and it's an interactive map, all of these different uh, agencies. I've been to most of them myself. I've been a correspondent at the United Nations for many years, uh, for nearly 30 years. And uh, it's quite amazing, when you, particularly when you go to a third world country and you see everywhere the United Nations, you see United Nations trucks, United Nations tents, United Nations buildings. They are the ones who are in control of all of the refugee centers. Uh, they are the ones who are in control of all of the bailout funds through the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank of the United Nations. And that is one of the areas that we've focused on a lot in the past few years, which is the international monetary control. Sure, and now and a few weeks ago... National currency. And, and, and I want to get to that because the world government's here, but they're not even hiding it anymore. So shouldn't that give us an advantage to force Congress to do something? But what about the Attorney General and the Vice President two weeks ago meeting with the UN and saying we're going to basically have the UN come in, take control of our cities, our cities' police programs to monitor them and to battle domestic extremists? I mean, I read the text. Earlier this week of what she had to say, it is so naked, William. Well, and this is one of many areas. This has been coming for a number of years. We've been reporting on it that every time there is a riot or a race incident, there are reports made to the United Nations. The same thing now with the refugee crisis. Those have to all come under United Nations control, United Nations monitoring, and uh, according to the uh, this next week, watch uh, 
this coming week in Geneva, Switzerland, the United Nations is going to be having the World Humanitarian Summit. And there they are going to lay down the, the basis for normative international law regarding refugees and humanitarian concerns in which our government, our State Department, representing the Obama administration and allegedly the American people, is going to go on record in favor of moving in toward this international law. Well, if you have international law, you have to have international enforcement, international monitoring. And of course, that means, again, more transfer of power to the United Nations and its various agencies, which is then, you know, the, the, the boldest and most bald-faced uh, grab for power is then coming up at the end of November and early December in Paris, France, where the United Nations is holding its uh, climate change summit, which is, of course, calling for uh, international controls over all of our the air that we breathe, over all human activities. Everything will have to be audited if you're going to build a house build a machine, if you're going to mow your yard. It's Agenda 21 on steroids. Have you ever seen them moving in unison this bold, A, and then B, are they accelerating their program because they're behind schedule or are they really doing well? Well, they're behind schedule on almost every front. Uh, you know, we, we've reported over the decades on a number of the uh, – leading timelines that they've put forward. And on most of them, they're years or even decades behind. However, they have been patiently laying the groundwork. And so now they have uh, been able to build up all of these various UN agencies. They've been able to uh, acquire the funds through the United States and the European Union primarily, uh, delivering up most of the funding for this. And so uh, with legions of bureaucrats in the UN bureaucracy and with all the NGOs that are funded by tax exempt foundations and government uh, grants, uh, they now have a veritable army which works in concert with the, the establishment news media to push these things forward. And so that when a, a crisis, a planned crisis like the refugee horde begins, then they have all of their activists, their NGOs, their think tanks, their media creating uh, a fake consensus all, all, right so they can come up with a fake consensus they can stampede people with a uh, uh, concern over humanitarian issues or things of that nature and i agree with you they're 10 15 years behind but now they're trying to accelerate their program and, and you can see how they have the cake and eat it too flood europe flood the u.s with millions of refugees destabilize get more welfare more government more regulation domestically, more police state to counter all the ISIS people they admit have come in. Then that's turned around against the indigenous populations or the populations that are more constitutional based. But then they'll hold Europe and the West hostage for hundreds of billions, as they're now saying, to fix the refugee crisis and stop the flow. So they're going to basically extort us now with the third world they control as the world financial collapse accelerates to give in to world government and world taxation or they'll hit us with billions of people. I mean, you can really well, see. I mean, yes, they're, they're going to try to to shove as many in here over the next few months as possible. And what they're telling the United States is, oh, it's only a few thousand but that's what they were telling the Europeans over the last several years. What they plan to do is put seed communities, seed migrants, and uh, you know, as we've as we've uh, exposed in the New American, we don't even know who these people are that are coming here. Most of them do not have identification. They have not been vetted. The FBI, the DNI say that they cannot uh, vet these people. They, there's no way that they can uh, tell if they're terrorists or not, or even where they're from, what what nation they're from. So uh, once they get a few in here, though, they already have these the migration refugee network built up with uh, hundreds, literally over over 300 groups that are getting uh, money from the federal government, almost all of it from the federal government or from tax exempt foundations like Soros, Ford, Rockefeller. Uh, these uh, various uh, groups like International Rescue Committee, World Relief. Uh, U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, uh, Lutheran World Relief Services. These, these groups are raking in tons of money. 
they have a financial incentive as well as many of them an ideological incentive to bring more and more Muslims to the United States. And I'm sure you've covered, as we have, the fact that the, the Christian